Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The heart, we might describe, is the engine of the human body. After all, your brain, legs, organs, basically all your members need blood, your lifeblood, to support them in order to operate. Your body needs you know, nutrients and energy, antibodies, and all kinds of other stuff that I'm not qualified to explain that only the blood can deliver. You can't have a healthy body without a healthy heart. And so, too, it's essential for us to pay attention to and care for not just outward things, not just what you can see and observe, but to our hearts as Christians and when it comes to our faith. The things that make you, well, you, the things that motivate you and excite you, that's what we mean today by when we refer to heart, not just the organ itself, right? The heart in the body is the locomotion engine that pumps blood to all the different parts of the body so each one can be nourished and strengthened. And likewise, the Christian heart is the engine that moves all of our faith and all the parts of our body in service to our Lord. And that means that issues of the heart are no small matter. Just ask any doctor. Any matter of the heart, well, it matters. So too, having a heart centered on Christ is no small matter either. If the heart ain't working, you, go, you can go through all the motions of faith, but eventually if your Christian heart is sick, the faith of a Christian will fall apart. And one key thing to remember is the key to a healthy Christian heart, much like a Christian mind, is to be focused on Jesus. Of course, it's hard to think about our heart without thinking about love. Heart and love go together, and our world definitely aches for and longs for and thinks about and sings about love a lot. Right? Just turn on the radio, and most of the songs on the radio focus on love, whether it's singing someone's praises or complaining about a breakup or anger over betrayal. Love is probably the most consuming and motivating force in, among human beings. Uh, that's why I picked these verses from Proverbs that talk about finding the right one. Uh, that's an important quest for most uh, for many young men and women in the world, round finding the one that's right for me. It's a wonder of God's creation that what often drives us is love, the desire to find one with whom we can spend and share our life with. Well, Proverbs, as I've already made mention, is written like a father speaking to his son who is coming of age. Perhaps uh, the most important advice given to the young man is that he spent his time and his passion on a woman who is worthy of his devotion and affection. The heart and soul of a person is, is a vulnerable and precious thing, so it shouldn't be treated cheaply or thoughtlessly. So earlier we read in Proverbs chapter 5, the young man is encouraged not to go after an adulteress and to avoid the, the blatantly sexy but also shady and untrustworthy woman. She, mokes, she makes every effort to look good on the outside, but her inside is poisonous and dangerous, and she saps away a man's life. Instead of the fast but faithless type of woman, Proverbs encourages seeking and embracing a wonderful wife. In fact, he says more precious than jewels is the woman who is resourceful, compassionate, hardworking, and clothed with strength and dignity. Her husband and her children both praise her and give thanks to God for her. And uh, I think it's real, really in, instructive what all Proverbs chapter 31 praises. And it's not what you, certainly not what you would expect from a male chauvinist sort of perspective. Rather, it talks about resourcefulness and trust, trustworthiness and uh, Ability to do all kinds of things. It's, and it's 
really important when we're talking about the heart, and that's why it's brought up in Proverbs, the chapter of wisdom, spends wisdom, uh, a lot of wisdom is spent talking about who you spend your time with. Um, and it's really important when it comes to our heart that we keep in mind these kinds of things because uh, we shouldn't just follow wherever our hearts lead, but in some ways, at least, our heads and our Lord should be leading our hearts, training our hearts to seek after that which is best, whether it be a good spouse or wisdom. And Proverbs is not only about it's on the surface, it's about seeking a, a good spouse, but it's also about seeking the, the faithfulness and committed love of Yahweh over the enticing and attractive but ultimately bankrupt uh, idols of the surrounding nations. Well, in our faith, it is the way in which we choose to... Hmm. I mean, I made my slide... Oh, there we go. Oh, was, um, in our faith, the way we choose to live and make decisions, it's easy also, right, to be enticed by all sorts of things that look good at first, that which feels good at first, but in the end does us no good. Just because it feels good, right, doesn't make it good. And so it's important for us as we talk about our hearts to acknowledge, one, that our hearts are not by nature perfect, uh, but rather need some training and correction. It's, uh, we, we can't simply follow unabashedly, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, listen to your heart, which gets put out there. Sometimes it's certainly true, but there are also times you can't just listen to your heart. It's important to be training us to be looking for and longing for what is eternal. It's much better for our hearts to be pining after God's kingdom than after money, power, or good feelings. And so, as much as we can, we train our hearts. Um, yeah, as much as we can, we train our hearts. You're, again, your heart is not automatically a spiritual all-star. It needs to put in the work, right? It needs to do some training, and we can feed and encourage in ourselves the right sorts of attitudes and desires, at least to a, a certain extent. And that's exactly what the writer of Proverbs is encouraging, this, in this case, a young man to do. What should you desire? Think about resourcefulness, strength of character, loyalty, and someone who cares and works hard. Those are probably the most important values when finding a spouse, in fact, that's what we ought to be looking for whenever we're looking to anyone for our, our, some sort of commitment in our lives, and certainly applies to what we, you know, we're, it's easy for us to be selfish in a lot of ways, but sometimes we're not far-seeking enough when it comes to making decisions about faith or who we follow uh, to be thinking about who's going to be good to us. And uh, that's the, certainly the repeated promise in the scriptures and of Jesus that God will be good to us. We can trust him. We can place our lives in his hands. And it's important that we do exercise a little caution when it comes to our hearts, because the heart, again, also must be trained. Uh, passion and desire are not bad things. However, they can't be trusted. The prophet Jeremiah says it rather bluntly. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Right? Not, you can't, sometimes you can't even understand what your heart wants, much less go for it. When it comes to our hearts, it's important to remember that our hearts are uh, absolutely, and our passions and our feelings are an essential part of who we are, but we can't let our desires drive us alone. Rather, we need to rein them in. We need our heads, right, to help lead our hearts. And we need not just any head, but the head we talked about last week. We need a Christian mind led by the Holy Spirit to guide and direct our passions and desires. And that's kind of going to be a reoccurring theme as we look about the different parts of the body there, right? It's a body, and so we can't look at them entirely separately. They work together. And there's a 
reasoning in the order that we've chosen, um, that we start with the head, then we go to the heart, and then we're going to see how, in the future, how the heart pumps out life and motivation to the rest of our body as well. Earlier in Proverbs, it says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. And this is that promise that I was talking about. And this is certainly not the only place in the scriptures, the Old Testament or the New Testament for that matter, where God makes us these kinds of promises. Just like, you know, if you're, when you're married or you're in love or you're in a relationship, you make promises all the time and you tell each other things and uh, reassure one another. And that's what the Lord does throughout the scripture. You can trust me. Trust in me with all your heart. You can lay bare your whole heart to me, God says, and commit your way to me and you're not going to be disappointed in the end. I'm not going to let you down. If we lean on the way of this world, whatever it is that we choose to lean on will eventually disappoint or betray us. But not if we trust in the Lord with all our heart. Because the human heart is designed to be given to one spouse. And the human heart is also designed to worship and serve and be connected to one Lord and Savior. What's more, we can trust our Lord and Savior because God has shown us his heart by sending us his love through his Son his only begotten son, to speak to us, to heal us, and to die and rise for us. If we want to know God's heart, then all we need to do is look at our Savior. In fact, it's God's love where it all starts, right? We love because he first loved us, the Apostle John tells us. And that's what can best motivate and change our hearts. It's simple. It's receiving God's love for us, receiving the love of Christ through, through God's promises, through his, um, this special meal, meal of his body and blood shed for us, those are ways in which we experience love, the love of God. And so it's good, and it's so good that we want to share it with others. In the same way that um, perhaps some of the, the best thing that can happen for a family is, is uh that uh, the parents receive love, um, and then they're more likely and more able to pass love on uh, to their children. And it's the same way with our faith. If we receive love from our Lord, we're more able, having been loved and experiencing love, uh, to be able to share that love with the world around us. Um, uh, in fact, um, but... The question remains, how can we get a better heart? David prays in the Psalms, create in me a clean heart, O God. Um, it's still all, all about Jesus and God's word and prayer. And so we got some of the same steps we used to have. We ask God to transform our hearts. We spend time with our Lord. And you know, we might put it a little differently this week and say, it's important to receive God's love, to receive his promises and his uh, confirmation and assurances of his love for us so that we can pass it on. But uh, assuming that all that is true and that we've got that in place, what kind of advice can we have specifically for our hearts? Um, and how can we use our hearts in service to God? Well, I think a, a, a really key piece is, is simply thinking about what we're already passionate about. What are you... What are we already caring about and passionate about? And is there a way that we can use the things that we care a lot about in service to others or to our Lord? Right? What, what are you passionate about? You know, what gets the wheels turning in your mind? What gets you excited? What keeps you awake at night in, in a good way that you're thinking about and planning about? Um, those are the kinds of things to think about. And again, perhaps already you've been thinking about them. We've got, after all, lots of wonderful people here at Grace who are doing exactly that, putting their passion into practice. We have folks who are good with a variety of things, including uh, good with, with finances or with flowers, good with uh, food 
or faith, all these things, and people who are passionate about these things help out uh, in, in church or uh, apart from church. Um, we have people who are handy, who like to fix things, who like to organize things, who like to teach, and all these people come together, uh, and we, I would like to think, make a positive impact on the world and serve our Lord at the same time. So it comes back to, as we talk about our heart, what does your heart long after? What do you love to see happen? Um, and have you connected that passion with your faith? Um, I suspect at least to some degree, for many of you, that's, that's true, that you've already connected that passion uh, to your faith. Uh, but keep, it's worth revisiting. How can I take what I love and make not just my life a better place, but make my world a better place, my church a better place, my work a better place? The scripture tells us, after all, that God gave us our gifts and our, heart, our passions and even our heart to make not just our lives better, but uh, the lives of others better as well to serve our neighbor, and, and often that's the best way we glorify God is by serving our neighbor. How can we, how can God's word, as we said, migrate from our head into our hearts, and then that pumps lifeblood so that our hands and feet are moving for Christ our Lord. And each week we talked about having a, a challenge, and uh, this week again we have a challenge and, um, and that's to think about what you're passionate about doing, the things that matter to you, the things that you enjoy doing, and think about one way in which you can use that passion to help others. Uh, let the, en the heart engine of your faith motivate you and, and drive you to, to do something for a fellow human being or for God or or for your church or related to your passions. And, and again, for many of you, if you're already doing something like that, which many of you are, I guess the challenge then is to remember that it, it's not, don't, don't just go through the motions. Remember that it's something that you're passionate about, that you care about, and that it really is a great privilege and opportunity to serve Jesus as you serve others. And so what, whatever it is that you're already doing, just do with a, a little extra oomph, with a little extra heart this week. Pour out your heart into what you do. As we are Christians and as we think about having a Christian heart this week, let's make the world a, a little better place and pour a little more heart, a little more Christian heart into the world around us, knowing that we're not just serving others, but serving Christ our Lord and giving a testimony to Him. In Jesus' name, amen.